Welcome to Back of the Rack, a gaming video cast about games long neglected and not respected. Games everyone's heard of and hated, or no one's heard of and loved. We play the games in between the essentials and the unwanted, but mostly we play what we want on this podcast. You can watch us on YouTube, which we consider to be the optimal way to experience our content, or listen to us on pop. Listen to us in podcast form. Listen to us on podcast. Wherever podcasts are, are available. Fuck, I fucked that one up. That's okay. Uh, make sure to like and comment on our videos and leave good reviews for podcast feeds. It helps us out and is the fuel that keeps this podcast going. We hope everyone watching and listening is doing great. And we thank you for joining us today. I'm Vendez, and with me as always is the beautiful, the man, the myth, the legend, Sandy. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna put a quick aside. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's daylight savings time. It's kind of bright outside. Uh, I've been playing. Yeah, it looks it. Elden Ring. So that's a thing. Uh, I'm just bouncing off of extremely hype game to extremely hype game at this moment while I wait for further confirmation on things, but. It's been because it's been, <laughs> been, you went, you played cyber, you were on Cyberpunk 2077 previously. Like you just recently beat that, no? Or am I yeah. confused? So I guess for everybody else that aren't watching this, but yeah, because this is going to be, yeah. So like from the time we recorded this, it has to have been like what, two weeks? Yeah. So I, I started right before the podcast and then I finished yeah. like a week after the podcast i want to say yeah because i've just mm-hmm. been bullshitting around all week so yeah yeah i pretty much how long did cyberpunk day. how long did it take you not that long see the craziest part about cyberpunk is that like most of the main quest is like half the game so like by the time you finish like the prologue and the main like first introductory mission you're kind of yeah. that that's it like you're halfway already done with the game it's really just banking on you to do all the side content and actually interact with the city and stuff like that before you uh mainline the game but it was it was very enjoyable i i, I liked it it was very a sleeper like i don't understand the hate when it first came out because it's, it's still a solid game but i don't know because i played the next gen version with all the pat bug fixes and not the main one when it released yeah, I heard it was uh, like really well received um, game when you put everything aside, like as far as the bugs and its release, uh, you know, the broken state, it, f- f- like, you know, the PS4 and Xbox One, I think, were the ones that were just like not right. able to run it well. And then there were some like bugs and stuff for PC and the PS5 and <clears throat> that other Xbox. What is it? Xbox Series? <laughs> that X? other is Xbox. That the- <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what Xbox? <laughs> It's like uh, like naming conventions for cars or something. Like the Xbox has a weird naming. I don't know, Brad. At this point, it's just but, the um, Xbox. Yeah, the Xbox, the next gen Xbox. But um, it looks cool, you know. And I don't think any of the bugs and stuff really deterred me. Um, I haven't played it. I want to really bad, but I mean, you said it was really good, and I I believe it. You know, I I believe what everybody says about it, but. You know, it's one of those games that had way too much fucking hype. Yeah, you gotta just sure. let like, that fizzle out a little bit before you hop in there. You can't just hop in fresh. Yeah. Well, like, let, let me ask you: Do you think the game was genre defining or genre breaking? Nah, it was just a, we've we've been having this 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 arc in the background. And it's like this foreshadowing of like open world games <laughs> and just how they yeah. are, but just. Yeah, it's it fits the formula so much of just like the Ubisoft tower climb, unlock the whole area, all that shit. I mean, you don't do that in Cyberpunk, but it like you you know what I'm saying? Like those type of over, open world games, you just know what you're going to expect out of them. And there was nothing really I didn't expect out of it. Like the hacking was already done in, in Watch Dogs, the cybernetics and all the extra stuff with the conversations was already done through fallout so it was just like it's just or day sex or deus ex yeah so it's just like this is just a cyberpunk of the same use of those games so it was just like it's whatever yeah. it's kind of like how horizon would feel or uh days gone or any of these other open world games that drop once a quarter <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I was talking about, and I sort of had touched on it with you because, you know, until the audience knows, me and Sandy have been having this conversation about 
um, the open world um, genre and open world fatigue. Um, and I was talking to my girlfriend about a little bit about our conversation and just how it's very akin to just any sort of genre fatigue. So let's say with the superhero, um, you know, genre, like it came and they were stumbling a little bit. They didn't know what to do. And then that one, that one superhero film sort of set a tone or a bar. I'm like, okay, a superhero film needs this and this and this to really be solid. And then people can play around within those parameters. So if you think of something like, um, like the first Iron Man movie, or even the first, uh, what Tommy McGuire Spider Man, right? Yeah. Um, but then there's that formula set, and then there's like the, the, uh, the variants, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So like you have like Watchmen, which is like still a superhero film, but it like makes it that's like the Elden Ring, let's say of the superhero film genre you know so it's it's kind of like that's a bold statement they, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, well, I, that's a bold statement <laughs> i say that just in terms of the way it's presented uh its topic um not that like elden ring and watchmen have like the same Similar, themes yeah. or i know what you yeah, mean but though. it's yeah but it's rather like the functionality of where it's like well we're taking this genre and we're still within that genre but we're gonna do it in a in a different way, you know, not too different. Like it's still open world. It's gonna, still like you're gonna be familiar you know, gonna with just, it, but we're gonna do yeah. something that makes you think more. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of like another super hero movie. Did you ever see the movie Super? Actually, with like uh, it has Dwight from The Office and Ellen Page, and it's like a very violent. Like, super super when you first yeah. said that i thought you were going to say the uh the movie with jamie fox <laughs> oh <laughs> machine gun kelly or for netflix yeah. i'm gonna be like what bro i, no. I don't <laughs> I, that's not that movie <laughs> no 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 there's another there's movie, movie like that there's um damn let's see bro this is this is this is your forte bro like <laughs> movies i go yeah the movie with uh the kid <laughs> from uh <laughs> He's in the background in the other movie. That's how I describe <laughs> movies. <laughs> um, but I, I think we're seeing that because I feel like video games, the whole genre is still so fucking new, you know, yeah. and it's moving rapidly as technology is like fucking moving rapidly. And I feel like a lot of us like kind of have to step back. You know, people are so like in it. Like if you step back, it's like, OK, you know, um, Ocarina of Time has done the Elden Ring thing where it's like open world. Like you don't really get like much direction you just go and figure shit out you know right. um you know breath of the wild maybe refined that so it, it's kind of like this interesting like um or i guess even a better analogy would be with the christopher nolan batman movies like those are superhero films still but they feel so different right you know people like who hate superhero films like, you know, like oh i hate movies. yeah like those movies so it's kind of like the same with I'm so tired of open world games, but then Elden Ring comes along. It's like I love these open world shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is, you know. So it's just interesting to see people react to that socially, you know, and like, um, I don't know. It's it, it's kind of fun, and then like you know because you had meant well. The, I think it started with a donkey video, which you guys should all watch because it's a pretty funny video. Yeah. Um, on his donkey, his his video on Horizon, uh, Forbidden West, and. He's like, I played it when I played this. And he's essentially describing that he played like four open world games within two months, which I'm like, yo, yeah, I could see why yeah. you feel that way. And he did just release a video about Elden Ring. So it's like, it's, it's not going to stop. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing, too. It's like the the rate at which we consume the content, you know, this unprecedented, you know, no, like I don't think any generation before has been able to consume content the way we do on a regular basis it's too much you know, you're probably consuming you know, binge- two different types of content watching <laughs> this right now <laughs> yes uh, which is something i want to get into for playing this game <laughs> this month's game but um yeah it's it's kind of interesting you know when you think about like the, just that consumption and how tired you get you know of it and you need like a palate cleanser or you're listening to a podcast or you're playing this so like are you really engaged with that content and are you really interesting. taking it all in right yeah yeah but um yeah i'm doing good 
Uh, nothing really new has happened. I think by the time this episode is out, we'll we'll have released our first guest uh, podcast, which will have been with. Wait, oh, hold on, I'm lost. Sean, no, yeah, it would have been Sean. Yeah, Sean. Sean. Okay, yeah. Sean, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that was really uh, exciting for us. I hope you guys checked that out, and uh, it was really insightful. And Sean had a lot of PS1 expertise. You can tell he really loves what he does, and um, well, he brought a lot of knowledge to the podcast for sure. Things that we don't really consider or know of, because yeah, because I didn't do know nothing shit. about that orange sickle juice. That shit was crazy. <laughs> I was learning about Donald Duck orange juice and orange sickle juice in the same 10 minute span. I was like, this shit is crazy. It was smooth and juicy or smooth, smooth and creamy. Yeah, or something. It's juicy smoothie or something. <laughs> something like that. Milk, uh, milk and orange juice. Man, it's wild. I should I should just try that just to fucking see. They get a little shot glass and put a little bit of orange juice and milk. I got in a it. shot of orange juice, a shot of milk. Uh, a little J- James. A little, little bit of Jameson. On there. <laughs> uh yeah so i've been okay uh, i've been playing horizon forbidden west still and it's going great i still love it um i did reach a point though where i was like yeah a lot of this a lot of what Dunkey was saying in regards to the like expository dialogue um is definitely getting to me you know because they talk a lot <laughs> it's just like it's just shut like, the fuck up i'm like you guys are making this story so much more complicated than it needs to be. It's not, it feels like it needed to have like another pass, like, like an editor needed to go through and sort of just like clean it up and or, just be like, no, okay, we, stop. They don't yeah. Like this is, not, this is unnecessary. Although like some of the options, so you have a cutscene, and the cutscene they talk about like, you know, what's happening in the story or like what the effects or, oh, wow, they did this. And, you know, and then it stops and then you get the choice on whether you want to continue like the mainline discussion or conversation or you know you can branch off to like really get into the weeds about specific things and sometimes i just regret asking i'm like i kind of <laughs> want to know more about this aspect and then they talk and i'm like oh damn, never mind all right like hurry up like shut up already like this is you're too just much. sitting there you know? like yeah all right come on <laughs> like and it's a lot of voice acting you know, that takes a lot of work. It's a lot of writing, I'm sure. Uh, they had to translate all this lore, make it all connect. Oh, into every link. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So you do kind of feel like, damn, you guys put all this work into it. And it's a pre like, I do appreciate it. But at some point, I'm like, damn, I I feel like you'd want maybe a lot of that in the beginning of the game, like the first half. But then it's still there. I'm like, how is this? <laughs> I almost feel like. How am I still learning like shit? A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, how much more is there? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. But um, I really like it. You know, it's uh, sort of this game is genre defining, I would say. And what I mean by that is just that it's, um, you know, peak this type of game. If that yeah. makes sense. You know, so uh, it's not breaking the genre. It's not you know, doing anything cr- crazy new, but it's like, okay, it's getting, you know, so. Kind of like how um, Last of Us was like genre defining for like linear action games, third person action games, where it's like, yeah, this is, can't get no better than this. Like, this is, this is it right, right. here. Like, you see this, this is the pinnacle right here. Yeah, like really uh, polished, masterfully done, which is surprising because it's Guerrilla Games, it's their, second open world game but yeah so i don't know how how they're just like yeah we got it but we did it guys uh, it looks it looks great in the ps4 too like that's surprising I'm to me racing. too because i just playing right now in ghost of tsushima legends like i'm looking at some of the models i'm like yeah this is definitely P- base ps4 right here <laughs> <laughs> well ghost of tsushima i feel had that problem i remember it the world looks really i mean it looks really beautiful but the character models, the way they move, the animations to me were always really stiff. I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, but it's also made by guys. Sucker Punch. So, like, they also did. Yeah, because they're the ones that did Sly Cooper, Infamous, right? right? Oh, wait. Did they not do Infamous? Yeah, they, I think they did Infamous, too. I think they did Infamous as well. Yeah, they did Sly Cooper for sure. Yeah, so then they Cooper definitely did moved. Infamous thing because the Sly Cooper, yeah, isn't, yeah. And like they yeah. all have the same issue. It's just sucker punched where like 
I, I know what you mean, and you can see it, especially when you jump onto something, because like Sly <laughs> Cooper, Infamous, they all do that like lock on, and it's so ugly. Yeah, like, like, like it's a weird jump, and I hate yeah. every time. Uh, that game's that game plays well, though. I do. Maybe I'll jump back into it for a little bit today. But yeah, playing Legends again, I really was like, yeah, this is, yeah, this is real fun, yeah. especially with the multiplayer. The multiplayer is really fun. What do you so what is the multi is a co op or is it v one v like what is it exactly? I so there is how familiar like are missions? you with Destiny before I make this analogy? Pretty familiar. Like I played the I did the whole story of the first one and then played a little bit of the second one. Okay. Yeah. So there's three different modes. So like you have five different classes. There's the samurai, the assassin, the hunter, and the Ronin, and then there's a fifth class, like a medic or something like that. And you have your skill tree and then like your gear, you have gear and like item levels and stuff like that that you get after completing. Like there's a survival mode where the longer you go, the better loot you get. Um, there is a story mode, which are just like little small map areas and you can stealth around with your friends, co-op, do whatever you need to do. And then there's rivals mode, which is Gambit from Destiny. Mm, yeah, okay. you okay. go around. So for those that aren't familiar with Gambit and from Destiny or Rivals from Ghost of Tsushima, you it's like a MOBA. But instead of attacking each other and during the lane phase, you have minions you kill and you get points and then you bank the points and then it sends a big super boss minion over to the other side to deter them or kill them so that they lose points so that they can't bank their points. And then you keep doing banking points and banking points so you get to a certain point which is like normally like 50 points or something. And then you fight a super boss. But mind you, the other team can still send super bosses to fight you with the other boss. And you have to just defeat your final boss before the other team's final boss. And that's the whole game. It's pretty fun. Hmm. That does sound fun. Um, why haven't you invited me to play it? Bro, what you, bro listen, we always <laughs> be talking about playing games, but like, I'll be up. <laughs> you know this. I'll be up, bro. Just download this shit, bro. I can, I'm about to add you to the Discord, bro. Fuck it, bro. I'm going to add you to the Discord after this, bro. You can see all what the... Disc oh, the... Yeah, yeah the squad yeah. Discord, bro. You, you're cordially invited after a year of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Ta Time is ticking. You're supposed to have been is... there. Hold on. I think this is our, like, official Wait, hold on. year anniversary. Nah, right? yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is... Hold on, bro. We started. We started in March, didn't we? I think let me check the uh, drive. Hold on, bro. Hold on. We got to we got to pause the podcast for this one. We really might be this really might be Did we record in March? Is that when we started? Cuz I remember we pushed it back. Yeah. I think or maybe we started in February. No. I think we started playing in February, but then we recorded in March. Because the second game, second site, I think we I think we only did it in like a week or two, right? Like it was like So I'm reading the Bladestorm uh, document, we uploaded that. It was created March 16th and last opened on the 25th. So I think we recorded on like 25th of March. Cool. I think. I, I don't know if that's accurate, but yeah, it's been a, uh, it's like, been a whole rough, last rough year. <laughs> Which it feels like <laughs> kind of longer. <laughs> As you say it, it's like, <laughs> damn. It's because it's the way we did our, you know, we're doing our seasons. Uh, we're doing six episodes per season, which is uh, one episode each month. So it's you roughly get two ep two seasons each year, kind of. Yeah, it gives us some time so. to breathe because you got to understand like this whole editing process. OK, first, like, can we I'm not going to spoil it. But for example, we always start playing the next game after recording the previous episode. And so after now we like. I'm like, ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So we yeah. decided on the game already. And then after we finish this, we got to play the game. Mind you, this nigga Ben, this nigga take, <laughs> <laughs> this nigga takes 18 years to beat a game. So like, I'll be like, yeah, bro, I'm done. And he'll be like, actually, I'm just on the fi first boss. I haven't even gotten that far yet. <laughs> and then after yeah, that, it talk, find a good time to record, record, edit two and a half, most maybe three hours edit that yeah. down to a digestible amount and then upload it to you guys in under a month and then do it for a yeah. whole nother game that's 70 hours and that doesn't and like 
you brought up a good point, <clears throat> and so did uh, our our guest Sean. Where it's like we also have our lives to live. <laughs> like I, I want to play other games, like not just these games that we play on the show. You know, like I want to play other shit, and also I have my own, you know, stuff that I want to get to my own channel. Um, you know, I, yeah. So it's kind of like it's hard to balance it all sometimes, and like. Um, some yeah, days you know. get home, you just don't want to record, edit, play a game. You just want to just get off work and go. But then you're like, yeah, fuck, I'm behind game. schedule because this could have been a day I could have been playing it. a personal game yeah. or a podcast game or a video. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's equilibrium. For our podcast not being as like popular um, as I guess, you know, we we would like. I am proud of it. So when people ask me like, oh, what are you doing You know, tomorrow or Sunday? I'm like, oh, I have a podcast to record. <laughs> it always feels like I'm doing something. What are you doing? Huh? Right. Exactly. You know, so, I was supposed to watch Boris to record. And- eat eggs and smoke weed but now look at me <laughs> according to podcast yeah, or like you know edit you know oh yeah i have to you know, edit videos like it just it feels nice having this creative productive outlet and then with somebody also i was thinking about this um but you know <laughs> you're the only person i've shared my hobby with to this extent ever you know like I've never had a friend who <laughs> what uh, hold on, I'm trying to make a point. Like I've never had a friend who like I've had to, you know, do like w- I mean, for one, be collaborative with. And then also we're playing the same games. Like I've had friends who play games, but like playing the same game, like the right. same weird game, you know, and then talking about it. Yeah, like, and it's not like a simple like, yeah, bro, did you see that boss? Nah, bro, that joint was hard. Yeah. It's like a we talk about this game. Yeah, like we, you know, writing about it and then we do it like good two hours on whatever the fucking game is. But um, sharing my hobby with somebody has kind of opened me up to a lot of things about myself, negative and positive. So one is that I always notice when you pick a game, I like go into it like this, like, mm, all right, let's <laughs> This is not good. It's but, not a good way to go into a game. But mind you, I'll be picking some shit. All right. I'm not we can't forget stolen. Even I was like, uh, uh, maybe not stolen. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes I just I mean, be, like the list is a lot of my choices, but it's a lot of bullshit in those choices. We gotta weave through yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And then you have a lot more games um just in general, like you know, physical media, so you have more to choose from. I'm very like discerning and like should I add this to the list? <laughs> yeah. You know, like I don't um because I know there is a lot of garbage out there and I don't want garbage games basically. Yeah, to be the filler. But um exactly. Um but yeah, like so there's that negative aspect, you know, and that kind of leads into today's game uh which is Dawn of Fate Terminator. Cue the trailer. And then a Terminator midget walks up and goes like <laughs> <laughs> and the care <laughs> or, or or we could make like the screen like flesh and then it's like to the T2 like metallic face. Oh no. So Terminator Dawn of Fate is one of those games. You forgot the where, name. Uh, yeah, because there's <laughs> multiple. <of them. laughs> Terminator uh, and I, Judgment Date. And I keep thinking it's Dawn of the Machines. Is there not a Dawn of the Machines? 
Or is there a Rise no. of the Machines, right? There's a Rise of the Machines. Terminator yeah, 4, so right? A, so, oh. like, a lot of the names, like, get confused for me. There's not a Especially Rise of the Machines. Especially because I'm Oh, not. Terminator 3 is Rise of the Machines. That is the subtitle. Okay. Okay. That makes okay. sense now. Yeah, that's the one. I remember seeing about, like, getting a lot of uh, exposure for marketing for that one. And so, it's, it's just stuck in my mind. But, um, yeah, so this is one of those games that you were like, hey, you, you actually had mentioned it a while ago to me. You know, yeah, it was one of like, those hey, after is, podcast games. Up. Yeah, and you're like, it's like a DMC clone, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> not to be, an, I, I feel like I sound like an asshole. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, no, like you know, <laughs> that's interesting, you know. And and then you know, you, I think we were trying to figure out what was the next game, and I, I was like, all right, yeah, let's. Let's do something completely out of out of left field. Like, yeah, like this is com- this is out of pocket. Like the Terminator d- dominant, you know. Okay, so I went into it pretty open mindedly, but then as I started playing it, and it's weird because like when you feel really positive, this is something about me. You like <laughs> this podcast is very self reflective. <laughs> when you are like really positive about something that I'm like still unsure about, I notice that I'll tend to be like. To sort of withdraw or disconnect even further from it, you know, because you were like, yeah, it's, you know, it's this and that. And I'm just like, wait a second. What is he seeing that I'm not seeing? So yeah. it's like furthering. I'm like, ah, it's not that great. No, nah, dude, it's shit. No, it's garbage. <laughs> it's like, it's the indivisible tip right? <laughs> where I'm like, indivisible right? is one of my top 10 games now. <laughs> Favorite game of all yeah. time. You're like, nah, it's all right. It's, it's a really bad um, habit or trait of mine uh, for whatever reason. And I don't know, it's because, like, no one's ever shared my enthusiasm for things or my, like, positive, like, oh, this is this is great, you know? No one's ever been, um, you know, sympathetic to that kind of stuff for me. So when, like, someone else is doing it, even with my girlfriend, like, with certain things that she finds interesting, she's, you know, like, we're talking about, like, movie soundtrack. She's like, I really like that new Batman theme. Um, and I was like, what? No, it's not even that fucking <laughs> great. <laughs> no. So what are you talking about? It's not, and then you know, Batman and Robin's theme is the best one. (laughs) It's the best one ever, always will be. But uh, I don't know. So it's kind of interesting. So I went in this with a very open mind, um, and there was a lot of things that I would like. I was liking, like just initially, aside from it feeling like my controller was broken because the controller or because the game is. Like the camera is just broken. Yeah, the completely. fixed camera. They just never figured out the, the way to control it. Yeah. So like um, if you're going one direction and it's a fixed camera angle and it switches, your controller will lock or at least your character will lock in that direction. So you're just like, what the fuck? So you have to like pull back, reorient yourself. Um, so it feels like your controller is just like sticking, you know, like the. What is it? The Joy-Con drift, the famous Joy-Con. Yeah, you're like, like hold on, let me unplug my shit real quick. I did. How many <laughs> yeah. times did you do that? I did it like four times. Where I was like, I switched oh, controllers. <laughs> I went. I, I went. I was gonna buy a new controller. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> both these don't work. Because I was just that convinced that it was my controller. I was like, ah, what's weird? I don't understand. And then I tried different games. I'm like, huh, hold on, it's this. It's the game. Game. <laughs> um, but it's one of those like bugs where it's like so hidden. Like, you don't even, like, it's not obvious because, you know, like, it's, it just wasn't clear to me that it wasn't my controller. Like, I didn't know. I was like, I don't, it it can't be, like. Right. But, uh, yeah, so I went into, I have no, I have no prior experience with the Terminator movies aside from watching the first and second one maybe a couple years back. T2, directed by James Cameron, is actually really, really good, but I didn't follow any of the rest of the movies because I'm not really interested in, like, the Terminator lore and stuff. Seems like a cool premise uh, based off this game. But um, I know that there was a couple games um, around my youth that came out. But I was just never interested in like shooting robots. robots or like. It was one of those series that I felt like played better as a movie than as a game. Right, in exactly. my eyes. Yeah. You know, um, so like I was never interested in seeing like a first person one or anything like that. I was like, OK, whatever, you know. That's just a licensed game. It's going to come out. Um, but just to give my like sort of my overview on how I felt. Uh, it was a. I actually quite enjoyed it. 
it was a blockbuster weekend game. And it was very similar to another uh, back of the rack darling, which is uh, Crimson C2, just a lot less polished and um, maneuverability and stuff like that. But it was, you know, simple enough and I got some fun out of it. Um, Actually, it's one of those games where I didn't want to be distracted by something else. Like I didn't want to make it a podcast game because I think because you liked it. I was like, okay, hold on. Let me I'll fully pause focus everything. The whole time yeah. I, did, I did this shit like a podcast game. <laughs> I didn't I even like, fuck about this story. <laughs> did, that's so funny because I was because at first I had a podcast going. Um, well, no, not when the uh, maybe about midway through. I was like, okay, I don't really know what's going on with the story. It seems like I maybe need to watch n- know about the Terminator lore, which I don't know. And I wasn't going to research that for this. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I'll just put on a podcast. But then like Halfway through is when I felt like something wasn't sticking or so I was like, ah, this is kind of this is it. Like I wasn't really it wasn't clicking with me yet. And so then I was like, all right, hold on, because I took a like two day break from it. I was like, all right, let me. I mean, Sonny's likes it. Maybe there's something here, <laughs> you know. So I was like, let me not listen to fucking uh, to a podcast or music or have some anime in the background. Let me just focus in on this, you know. And so. Yeah, I just kind of just like let let the game take me. I really engaged myself with it. And I was like, okay, this is fun. This is like very bare bones. It doesn't it doesn't need to be more. I have no expectations for it. Like it doesn't it probably could use some polish for sure, but it's um, everything we wanted though. It doesn't do too much. <laughs> it doesn't do too yeah, low. It, it's it just does. And it's the perfect amount of i gave a fuck enough but not i gave a fuck too much it's just like exactly yeah it was it's a very digestible this is like the bare minimum of a game for me i would say yeah like yeah like if someone asked me like yeah like it's not like like it's i don't want to say it's on the cusp of trash you know because that's like too close to like yeah but but if i this is my lowest standard yeah like if i I bought it Thinking like if I was like a kid and like a Terminator fan and I was like, I'm gonna buy this Terminator game. I wouldn't be mad that I bought it. Kind of like um that Hulk Angly Hulk game where it's like people don't like the Angly Oh yeah. Oh Ang Ang Lee, the director of yeah. Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who? What? <laughs> but yeah, like uh like how the movie you you'll never watch that movie again. But the game, it's like, yeah, that was fun. Because I was a kid. I was like, I'll just buy the game. It's based on the movie. I'll be the Hulk. And it's actually a really fun game. It's the same situation with this game where it's like, it's not an, it's just right for the pro- intellectual property that it's based off of. Yeah. I know that uh, it was a little bit rushed in development. But um, yeah, overall, it was, it's a great weekend game. Um, glad to have it in my collection. You know, it's, um, it's just like, yeah, this is a great game to kind of just like. It's it's a very I can't find the word for it, but it's like a it's like a bag of chips, like, you know, like it's just like gar- junk food. Like, it's just like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you can all really right, so what was you- mine them to like the story and all the extra shit, because it's never like you're like, what the fuck do I got to do now? It's just run right, into you yeah. find a robot and kill it. Yeah, that I did like that. Aspect <laughs> of it. What were what were your like overall uh feelings of it? See, I lied to you. I did see this game as a kid, but like I didn't know that until after I started playing it. Like oh, okay. but I just thought it was one of those random games I was like, yeah, whatever, I don't care about this. But um Yeah, <laughs> I see I knew it was a DMC clone from the gameplay, but like I didn't know to what extent or how much because all you see from like looking at gameplay is like, okay, I got a really large jump. Well, no, you don't have a jump in this one, but like you got a really large guns, you dual wheel, you're smacking stuff with a baton. I was like, okay, this is Devil May Cry. But it's not. It's it's no, no. I I, I enjoyed it. There's a lot, not a lot of licensed games, but at this time, there's a lot of licensed games that are like really good. Like you either have dog shit or like the Punisher. And there's no in between. And well, I, yeah, and or, or I guess like the incredible, the Incredible Hulk, um, Spider Man Two, um, Fantastic yeah, so you, Four, yeah, right. yeah, Fantastic Four X. Uh, 
Wait, hold on. Strike Isn't two. There... Um, yeah, yeah. Damn, there's a lot. We can keep going. <laughs> mainly superhero ones. Now that yeah, about. mainly mostly. Uh, well, I I guess Ninja Turtles. That's like a licensed kind of thing. Yeah, All, the know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, go on. Yeah, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm glad that we chose this one because at first, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was kind of like, I might have fucked up. This might be another stolen situation. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily it wasn't <laughs> i thought that too i really did i did but i'm glad we saw it through it i mean i was telling elise that i have i had a lot of problems with it initially and i was like yeah i don't know i i think sonny likes this one way more than i do and i'm just like this is straight dookie butter but it was it was fun I had fun with it, you know, and it, it feels like a back of the rack game. It feels like something I would play when I was younger, enjoyed, forgot about, you know, and then like recalled and just been like, oh, yeah, I played that one. That was actually kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, but it is plagued with a lot of technical issues and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get into some of the facts about it. Yeah, this um, is this is a weird one, I would say, on this one. Because this one is technically canon and was canon until um, Time Paradoxes became the norm in this franchise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it technically is, but it's technically not. And around this time, like Terminator has like it's like Star Wars where it has like books and comics that like extend the lore yeah. of TV shows. Like it, if you really want to get super into Terminator, you can, but it's not really yeah. necessary. And there was never a game or anything until, unfortunately, a couple years later in Hollywood. Um, anything that really showed modern day in the movies. So this game was kind of created to be like, we want to see what Kyle Reese, who is unintentionally, but technically intentionally, the father of John Connor, who is the one that defeats the robots which is why they sent back Arnold Schwarzenegger in the past to assassinate John Connor's mom. And he sends Kyle Reese back in time to save his mom and inevitably conceive him. And that's the entire plot of Terminator 1. It gets more convoluted with Terminator 2 and 3. But all you need to know is that this is a prequel to Terminator 1. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever because you actually play as Kyle Reese. Though he doesn't look like the guy, the actor, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was confused. Um I did actually like that aspect of it, but we'll I guess we'll touch on the story in a later uh, yeah. segment. Um this was the first time yes. they also showed off some of the uh ex speaking of speaking of extended universe stuff, like a lot of the extended universe um models of Terminators and stuff like that. And the developers, that was the coolest part to me was that what is that word, bro? I can't, I can't, I can't pronounce. Pritigram? Paradigm? Paradigm? <laughs> Pritigram? <laughs> Pritigram game? <laughs> I wasn't even sure which word you were talking about, but I, I, I had a feeling. I'm like, he's not talking about paradigm. Is he? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about paradigm. Paradigm yeah. Entertainment. <laughs> they actually got their start doing Un ironically military contracts for uh ai and graphics and what? we're making like flight simulators and stuff like that and yeah nintendo when they saw their uh demos for flight simulators and said hey do that with us and they created pilot wings which is undisputedly to a lot of the old niggas listening like a really fun game apparently <laughs> <laughs> it's just flying a plane i like ace combat listen hey I got an Ace Combat right here that I just haven't opened, so don't judge me. I There's like... a lot of those games. Yeah, it's... and you'll have to you'll have to recommend one to me because I I've seen some and I'm like, hmm, Ace Combat. Oh, maybe 4. I should ask Sandy. Ace Combat Four. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Offer because there's like the greatest uh, or I'm sorry, the greatest hits for PS2, and it's oh, I think it's Ace Combat Four. I think that's four, the... five. I think all of them I can't are in the there. number that's on it. Yeah, there's a lot that are in like the greatest hits, which I I'm always like. So this one sold a lot. <laughs> this is that popular. But yeah, and yeah. they went on to after because this game was at the very weird time of Atari's like 
absorption when like a lot of their properties like they were making pretty much every dragon ball z game and anime game and stuff like that but at this time they kind of went had to get some money back so they sold all the rights so a lot of this company they were dissolved and most of them moved on to gearbox studios which went on to make the borderlands series so a lot of the people that are credited on this are not credited with the creation of the borderlands series and everything over there so works out (laughs) (laughs) damn yeah um that is definitely one of the more interesting aspects of the team uh the whole you know militaristic sort of silo that they found themselves in and then where they went from there i'm trying to think of like if you see any of that in the gameplay you know any of maybe some borderland dna or maybe some military dna i don't feel like i got any of that in any like, yeah no this yeah. is a really weird game for them starting with it's flight like they games it. and then yeah yeah there's you nothing to be like a flight like a, a a flight sim level or something yeah something where you fly a plane or something Nah, nothing nothing at yeah. all i wonder if the developers i feel like they did respect the terminator lore though i would say it I'm not familiar with it, but it seems like they didn't like just go off completely the like the rails unless are some of the characters made up like for this game, like Luna and yes, uh, all of them except the tattoo face dude, the other dude that you play. He's actually mentioned in one of the future scenes in the first Terminator. Okay, yeah, so he's 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 canon at least him and Kyle. is it De- Diego? What the hell's his name? Re- Reyes or something? Was okay. Ramos? Something. Yeah. Raymond? I don't know. Something like that. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it just feels like there was like a, a respect to the franchise that they gave um, with the story and like everything that they were showing off. It just seems like they didn't have enough time to maybe polish things up, maybe include as much as they wanted. But um there does seem to be like some sort of maybe appreciation or love. So they, I feel like they respected the franchise essentially is what I'm saying with, with this development. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think about the way, cause you watched the first two movies, right? Yeah. Yeah. More I've recently. watched all of them except like the lies two, whichever like think- the new ones are. I haven't watched those ones. So did you did you feel that this game sort of respects or captures the Terminator? Yeah, um, like, yeah, because feel? I would say I've always said I've always been a proponent of this is that Terminator really was good for the first two movies. After right. that, it's right. like, all right, bro, like, like benefit of the doubt, you can give Terminator its own singular thing and you can be like, this is cool. This is interesting at the time. Taking a Hollywood celebrity and making him the. The, the horror monster essentially but in like a sci-fi yeah. setting it was cool but then terminator 2 of course you had to make him into the hero and it's it's a cool good really good action movie hollywood action movie and after that they fall off every time like it's if you watch them recently you kind of can see it it's kind of like um I'm trying to think of another series it's kind of like Star Wars, where it's like you have your set movies that are good. And the more we make of this, the more it deteriorates the good factor of the good part of this series. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's that's the danger for sure. Yeah. That's why I like this game a lot, where it's because it's all leading up to the final battle where you actually send Kyle Reese back in time to the beginning of the first Terminator movie. So, like, all this shit that happens before it doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want. I don't care. As long as we get to the final level, we know it's going to be, oh, good. We got to go stop the base. And then you're good. Like, you don't have to do nothing extra. Like, if you were, like, if this is Star Wars, we'd have to explain which era it is, what time period, if these characters are alive, what's the government geopolitical landscape of the galaxy. Like, nobody has to do all that. Yeah. Do you know anybody who's like a real big fan of the Terminators movies? Because I'm there's so many movies and I'm like, okay, there must be like fucking fervent. Like, you know how there's those like super Star Wars fans? I know like three of them. 
like everything Star Wars. Like I love Star Wars to death, you know, and then I, but I've never met a, like, Terminator. Oh, I'm a huge Terminator fan. It's like, who? Who's <laughs> like, like that? Yeah. I mean? <laughs> uh, I'd say, I'd say my, do you I'd know? Say, I'd say my, my in-laws are like that a lot. Like they really they like, like Predator and Alien, like Aliens ah, and Predators. They and really enjoy that series. In, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I feel like terminator alien predator they they're in like the same mold it feels like you know um i think they're in are, are they in a fighting game like they're all in mortal kombat justice or, mortal kombat okay that's what it is because they're yeah they're what well, they're owned by wb or something I don't yeah know. but um yeah just playing this game environmentally and you know not knowing much about the lore except for watching the first two movies a while ago I'm just like, what is it that appeals? <laughs> what is it about this franchise that's just people that love, people still you know? like? What I don't yeah, understand. I'm like, how is this still how is this still going compared to like, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to think of another movie or something that was just as good, but it's just like, why why didn't this keep going? You're like, I don't know, fucking Goonies. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think of like one offs that were like so good. It's just like. That's interesting how some things just don't pick. But that's how, but that, that's, uh, there's, we said it already. Aliens and Predators, they kind of are the same wheelhouse to where like the first two movies are really good. But then after that, it's like, all right, st- stop. Just stop. Yeah. Every time with Aliens yeah. and Predators, it's like, I don't need to see their face. I don't need to see titty Predators. I don't need to see none of this, bro. Like, just keep it original. Mm-hmm. That's that money machine, you know, and the fans keep coming back. <laughs> I think uh, with. I don't think I've seen any of the Predator movies now that I'm thinking about it. Have you? Fuck. You guys yeah, have seen do, any. <laughs> <laughs> you got to at least watch the first one, at least the first one. I feel like I maybe seen the first one when I was really young. You would have been traumatized. Cause movie, Why? Because that shit came out. I mean, dude, I've seen. Like, what's. <laughs> like, what's the worst shit you've seen when you were younger? Because <laughs> I mean, Predator, I mean, compared to many movies, it's I feel like The Matrix, seeing that young, I was like, what the fuck? See, I was kind of a bitch as a kid, so, like, I didn't really watch you horror were... movies or something like, nothing like that. Like, I think the most, I think the, what traumatized me as a kid was Freddy versus Jason. Like, that first kill yeah. when he was, like, folding the bed on Shadi. I was like, oh, my God, you're going to do that to me. <laughs> but <laughs> that was like... I used to run out the room. That or like signs. Like when that alien walked across the alleyway. Shit. Yeah. I, re- I thought that was real. Like I was like, yo, this is. We got aliens for real. Like documents. Something like Bla- Blair Witch Project or something. Um, Predator came out in 1987. So yeah, that was, that was four before years time. before I was born. Yeah. And way before your time. So I probably. It was probably playing around somewhere. But it also just never interested me. Like, there's something about like just the whole concept of it. I was like, nah. Like even like <laughs> there's that new pre- there's that new Predator game, isn't there? Um, yeah, they gave it away because nobody played it because that's how everybody feels with Predator. It's like <laughs> we like Predator, yeah, but not enough to play a asymmetrical game, live service game. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of weird. And I it's funny that fucking arnold schwarzenegger is like on the cover looking just, like a terminator just for that you know we're going to play season five predator hunting oh grounds <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to play uh that shitty alien game that on playstation uh, Gearbox one made. Yeah. <laughs> oh actually alien trilogy on ps1 is really cool remember i i put it on i shared it with you on the um yeah with you and sean dude I was playing a little bit of that. I'm like, well, how did I pick this? This is uh, this is awesome. This is really yeah, cool. exactly. Yeah, bro. Some good games. Uh, Fits the same mode as this game. But I guess presentation wise, what did you think of this game? I mean, <laughs> this is the <laughs> aspect of the game that was like the least up my alley, like the least impressive. It just felt like nothing was really um, put into the environments. But it also felt like a PS2, like, sort of, like, uh, a PS2 movie-licensed game. I feel like, you know, they, they need to be made in a certain amount of time. So you don't get a lot of detail in the environments. 
Um, a lot of the places are just not memorable, you know, um, even like the NPCs, some of the enemies as well. Like, I mean, obviously you're fighting the iconic, you know, T-200s or whatever, the um, just the robots. But they felt like, I don't know what you would say, just generic. Like, it all felt so generic. And I, I think that's what took me out of it because I'm such... As I said before on this podcast, like just a more visual person, like I need good art direction, right? Yeah, but it doesn't help in the that shower you're... today. Oh wait, oh, got it. So yeah, so it. I was trying to be as thorough and as thoughtful in my thinking in regards to like calling this thing this uh, uninspired or just visually dull. So I was thinking, I'm like, okay art direction right it needs to serve uh, a specific purpose um it needs to your art director essentially needs to capture the tone the ambience the um the style of the game with a specific color palette with specific environments and all that and I was looking at some images of Terminator I'm like this game or this uh just the setting of all the T2 movies, and especially like in the post apocalyptic era, they're all drab. <laughs> they're all pretty boring, pretty like the it's not the environment that matters to like they're going nowhere really cool. It's just like, yeah. I mean, aside from like the T fact or the uh, yeah, they really going Skynet. The yeah, but to be fair, the world was literally duped. So if it didn't yeah, look exactly. like this, then I would be confused. That's why that one. Um, that one particular mission where you walk down an alleyway and you it's like sunset that was like the coolest and most memorable scene out of the entire game because it's different it's like oh yeah the mm. sun yeah being outside is where my frame rate dipped <laughs> i was like oh my god what is going on <laughs> but yeah so i figured the art direction actually succeeded in its replication of sort of what the movies have set for the environment for the setting so it's hard to say like that it's it was bad it just wasn't up to my preferences you know not to say that i can't appreciate a post-apocalyptic world um but yeah it's just kind of like you know they're bland i didn't i mean they're not terribly boring it was kind of fun exploring a little bit if you know or just kind of making your way around and seeing, you know, what, what area you were going to go into next. But, um, yeah, ultimately I think that what was really striking to me were the character designs. Um, and not that they were like so unique, but I just liked their like star Wars rebel <laughs> looking like, like normal as this... like battle fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I just liked the way they looked. And I also liked that you they presented you with different characters to play. And they all kind of had like a unique animation for when they're fighting. You know, so it kind of, you know, it gave it a little bit of pizzazz. And um, yeah, so yeah, I think I liked it. The fixed, an the fixed camera angle was something that we were talking about before where it's like it was it was working against the game, you know. And a lot of reviews are saying like, well, they should have committed to either fixed camera fully or like a you know, third person kind of for, or or first person because it actually has a first person button um which right, yeah. was fucking not helpful <laughs> but, uh yeah but they decided to like mix it in a weird way um, but uh yeah and then like the sound effects i didn't actually like the soundtrack so that's you didn't like the, the rock song that came on when <laughs> combat started. The ding, 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 ding. I was like, yeah, this is this is Devil May Cry right here. This is this is Devil May Cry right here. <laughs> so, yeah, I just didn't. I did know that there was like an orchestral brass piece that would loop when like nothing was happening. But, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of like the rock. So I would kind of just like I turned down the music. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, I like the menus of this game, actually, now that you mentioned that, because <clears throat> it has like that, uh, like uh, PC 98 Windows kind of look to it, where it's just like the green, like, you know, scan line kind of uh, like overview UI. It's really cool. Um, and that home menu 
we were talking about. I I did figure that out on accident because I think like I dropped my controller and I saw something moving. You really? Like, I was like, what, what the? Are yeah. You <laughs> well, I thought I broke it. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this game? But then I was like, oh shit, you can actually move the camera and shit. Um, but did you do the training? By the way, yeah. Did you go and that like, shit before horrible. you played? Yeah. That was the worst <laughs> training I've ever seen in my life. I like I didn't understand anything that was going on. It does not explain adrenaline. Yeah, no. Which is weird. Which is like, yeah, because that's one of the main features of the game. But yes, uh, let's just jump on over the story. I want to hear your take. Okay. <clears throat> so story. The story is interesting because it was it really ramps up and it actually caught my interest later on. And um, so when I popped it in, started playing uh, from what I remember, it's like. You know, it does like a little prologue of like what's been going on in that world. And then you have some of the key members, John Connor, Reese, the other guy, Raymond, Ramirez, whatever we, <laughs> Ramirez, Ramirez sounds accurate. Um, and, you know, like they're all talking and then they find out that there's like some like a mole, essentially, uh, or that some data has been leaked. And so they know the so the robots Skynet knows where they're hiding. And then they get ambushed and then, you know, hijinks after that ensue. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of actually really liked this, the, the aspect of the story where it was just like John Connor and uh, Reese are, you know, have this like back and forth about certain things. It, it's really like subtle. Like the story is like drip fed to you and it almost like you don't get like really good characterizations of each character until maybe later down the line for some reason but like because i felt like it was kind of bare bones the story in the beginning and then like towards the end like you know you kind of get luna in there and then you get like sort of the relationship with her and ramirez with, um and it's a lot of those cutscenes and stuff are delivered uh through like a little comms MGS status, like yeah, and like you, you know, can like a, see the animation, <clears throat> the movement. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I I really like that effect to it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it later on than like in the beginning. I was like, oh, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was good, and I really like the app, the addition of the three characters of playing as Luna, her doing her own mission, and then playing as uh. Ramirez and then doing Diego. his mission. Diego, which I do we not have it? And hold on, I think I have this pulled up. I'm really curious what his name is. Uh, it's gonna be something like Deej. It's gonna be something silly. Kyle Reese, Catherine Luna, and Justin Perry. What the fuck did we get? <laughs> what the fuck did we get that? I don't know. He just looks like that Diego. Like that would be his fucking yeah Ramirez. <laughs> that's so weird because it kind of looks a little hispanic or is it just me no nah, yeah but it's funny because like apparently he is black <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's supposed to be black. oh yeah I'm okay well like and we, i think he does show up in like a tv show mm. i don't know i think i think he pops up on a tv show so i'm not a terminator expert don't quote me on that yeah we're not we're not terminator fans uh I fucking but terminator. <laughs> I hate this scheme. Why are we doing this podcast today? <laughs> so yeah, those three, and then uh the whole aspect of like, you know, John Connor telling Reese, like, if we fail, you need you're gonna have to go back in time, you know? And he's like, Oh, will I be coming back? And he's like, No. No. You know, and even not knowing or not remembering too much of like the story from T1 and T2. That was still compelling enough where I was like, oh, damn, that, that's kind of cool. Like, just that aspect where he's like, hey, man, like, you're going to, if we fail, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to go back in time. Honestly, if this game was a standalone and the Terminator whole franchise didn't exist and, like, that was just how it ended, that'd be a cool cliffhanger. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't yeah. it be like, like, if this, like, if you just. If this had nothing to do with with that whole like you know con the the Terminator universe, maybe a lot of it wouldn't make sense anymore. But like, 
it yep. would be a really good story and a very fun, interesting, like intense, suspenseful kind of story. Yeah. And it is kind of like drip fed to you. Like if you know Terminator 1 and stuff like that, like, okay, that's that's John Connor's dad. Like they kind of like hint at like all the things like uh, Perry saying like, what's so special about Kyle? Why is why are we always protecting Kyle? Always rescuing Reese when he's in trouble. Like, just let that just let him be. And he's like, no. We have to get him because he yeah. is the reason why we even get this far. Like, if he doesn't go back in time, I like, guess just, I don't know. I thought that's really cool. Like, if there was a sequel to this game, I would rather it be a game based on Terminator 2. Mm. I was going to say cool Terminator if, 1, but nah, that wouldn't be fun. <clears throat> it'd be cool if they just sort of, like, did their own thing with it. I'm trying to think of a, a another game that just like, oh, it's set in the same universe or like it's an alternate timeline. You like like made their own video game canon, kind of like Star Wars has like the books have like their own canon. Yeah. You know, that'd be kind of cool because it's like I, it, it must be hard to work within the confines of a pre-existing um, like you. Wait. Was T2 when did T2 come out in the 90s? T2 was already out. Oh, OK. OK, OK. I wasn't sure if this came out in between the first Terminator and the second one. I, yeah, but, Which is weird because okay. there's a time paradox in T2 that the fact that T1 happened created T1, first of all. But then like, oh, so because of T1, she trained John Connor to be like how he was in T2. But it's like he never mentions. Yeah, we, they sent the Terminator and I sent my dad back in time to save my, my mom's <laughs> life. But then they sent another one to yeah. protect me when I was like a little kid. So. Be on the lookout for that. Like he never mentions anything like a, like during that final mission because that's, that's apparently when it's supposed to happen in the time paradox. So there was never like after per- like after Reese goes back in time, there wasn't like an additional mission to be like, all right, Perry, we're gonna go reconfigure this one and send it back to help out Reese. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Hmm. I kind of am interested in watching the movies now. I think I might pick them up. That's what I'm saying. Like they're only cool in hindsight when you think of the first two movies, and then after yeah. that, just being like, "All right, whatever." So I remember Terminator Two was had some really cool set pieces, like some action set pieces. Where I was like, "Damn, this is cool." But James Cameron like was at the height of his career, you know, when he was doing like you know Aliens, uh, and then he took over for T Two, and then uh, I guess Titanic, which is has a lot of action. It's a good movie people die um, yeah <laughs> if you ever watch those movies there there's there's something so tangible about those movies like about death i think it's just destruction because, of a tragedy no 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 <laughs> um it's a like f- for one when you shoot when you shoot film like on you know 35 millimeter you know film it, it brings like a texture and also they use sets like real life sets so everything looks so gritty and real but then, like in new movies now, you kind of just get this high, oh, that's Atlanta. polished, super clean, <laughs> Let me like guess. polished. That's Atlanta right there. <laughs> but like, it's I don't know. It's just interesting because those movies have such grit to them. I remember, um, you know, just yeah, just watch, go back and watch Aliens, and then watch Alien Covenant or Covenant Revenant, Covenant, the newest Alien. Or watch uh, T2 and then go by, back and watch um, don't whatever watch the Terminator latest Genesis. Terminator. Don't, don't watch it. I, I'm trying to tell you right now. Don't watch it. <laughs> I'm going to finish watching that's, the, I, I, that's what I should do. I should finish watching a series so that I'm not talking out my ass. I'm I know. But, like, it's bad. Because what if it's like really good, but it just flopped because of COVID? Because that did come out. Yeah. yeah Someone out. told me that it was really good, but I was like, I don't care i have no stake in this franchise i don't even know oh yeah it did come out right as soon as covid hit damn oh dark dark fate is the last one what the fuck is genesis genesis was before that's 2015 i'm confused bro all right listen (laughs) gameplay (laughs) fuck this shit yeah yeah let's move into gameplay so, do you like Devil May Cry, right? The first one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, what are your what is your experience with the Devil May Cry? And <clears throat> I like to say, 
character action games for yeah i i like the way you put that character action games um um i played the first devil may cry uh bayonetta i've played um lollipop chainsaw uh you know i don't think i beat the first devil may cry but i I don't blame you it's bad art (laughs) yeah i yeah i remember the third one i don't think i beat that one uh or the fourth but i've played a lot of them and i played like a good but they get hard (laughs) i'm just like okay and i was young too so i was like nah yeah, like now uh, that you make know cry the mechanics, five, you'll probably yeah. it'll be easy for you. Yeah. I should go back um, or, or get the collection on PS4. Uh, I played Devil May Cry 5. What's some other character action games? Um, No More Heroes. Uh... Which I've never played, but I have now. Should I keep that one? I'm confused. That's back of the right. It's like, nah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I mean, I mean technically. I, but I, technically, I would say it is. Yeah. yeah. What's she trying to do, bro? <laughs> I added to the list. I don't I feel like it qualifies. See, but. okay, Heroes Paradise is a good one because I know is that the you, one I have? Yeah. You don't like motion okay. controls, so you'll be good. So like the fun <laughs> part about the game was that like, you know, you'll be so like when you 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 is normal. It's normal controls, unlike Spectrobes. But like when you do like wrestling moves, like you can like it'll pop up on the screen like the direction that you do the Wii Remote and the nunchuck and so you'll be like suplex up. Um downfield and you just you know i mean just real quick but like when you need to recharge your sword you have to grab the wii remote and go (laughs) (laughs) and the character (laughs) i remember that yeah i (laughs) remember clips of that and as a little sixth grader playing this game because i'm just like mom buy this anime game for me she's like okay whatever it's fucking anime it's just gonna be little girls and (laughs) then she walks into the family living room and i'm like (laughs) Fighting a boss with just a bikini and a grenade launcher for a leg. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. what the fuck did I buy? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you became bi. <laughs> that's that's the reason. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In, in short, yes. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so character... Character action games. What else can you think of? That's that's kind of it. So I've I've always been fond of those games. They're they're tough, but yeah, it's more about less about like weapons. You know, there's a vast move set and stuff like that. But it's more or less. I always say character action games are defined by one, you liking the character, two, the character being badass, and three, it's all about at how flashy and how long can you last with your combos. Like, God of War is technically a character action. Game. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, God of War is actually, yeah, character action, I'd say. Yeah, and I, from what I saw of the gameplay, I thought it was going to be that, but it's not Devil May Cry 1. It's Devil May Cry 2. And yeah, in a good way, though, because Devil May Cry 1, guns were strong, but not strong strong like devil may cry now it's just like guns are just there to you know extend your combo a little bit they're not like gonna do damage but devil may cry 2 your guns actually like were the strongest thing in the game like it was just i'm just gonna shoot everything and that's how this game played and that's like a good thing because i was expecting the combat like at least melee combat to be more like like uppercut them in the air do a spinning slash into a sonic thrust and stuff like that but it's it's not that it's just one two three and then you use your guns and i like that because it makes sense lore wise like if kyle reese was doing kung fu and jumping and right. double jumps and then can barely survive a shotgun i'd be like all right bro what are you doing because yeah some of the the melee attacks when you go into adrenaline mode which we'll talk about is like they do like some kung fu like kicks and shit that sort of feels out of place but it's like just enough where it's like okay that's satisfying enough and it's like within the realm of the world so i'll i'll take it but you can't do like crazy combos or anything like that you can't juggle enemies right uh, there's it's really straightforward um and the buttons are actually funny which i want to talk about real quick so square is to shoot which <laughs> like I'm just not used to. <laughs> yeah. And then you lock on with L2 R2, right? No, it's R I think R1. Oh, R1. Okay. R2 is the first person camera. 
Yeah, R2 is the random first person camera, which I actually didn't find out until like later. <laughs> um, like, oh, what is this shit? Yeah, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Uh, Circle is, is that your adrenaline? I think that's dodge, I'm going to say. Yeah, circles dodge. X is con- is your melee attack. Yeah. Triangle is gen- adrenaline. L1 is adrenaline. Yeah. What the fuck is L2? No, no, no. No, no. L1 is to bring down your menu to select your, your items, weapon. Your MGS or, yeah. menu. And then L2 <laughs> yeah, is yeah, adrenaline. Yes. And then what the fuck is triangle? Heavy I attack. I think triangle is a heavy Heavy attack? Shut up. I'm going to play this game again. What do you mean? <laughs> There's a heavy attack? I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> shot the gun, bro. I don't know. <laughs> so, or use. Um, Maybe it's use. I think it might be use or something. Like yeah, it, or like interact. Yeah, like interact. Yeah. So for a while, I was like, I keep pressing the wrong square to shoot and not like hit was confusing to me. Dynasty War years of Dynasty Warriors and other games squares like the attack button. Square you know, and triangle, a tr- light, heavy. It is. It is a commandment at this point, like L3 to sprint. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I tried to switch the... Because con- you can remap them, which is always appreciated in games, especially older ones. And like, apparently I did get used to the old controls because <laughs> then I was just confusing myself. I'm like, wait, hold on. What's to... Hold on. You know, so I'm just like running around, not uh, just dodging and not aiming and all this. So I just went back to the old controls and I got used to it. Um, and they make sense. They start to make sense. I'm like, okay, this square is fine with shooting because that's actually the you're actually going to be shooting the most. So that's right. why that's why it's not another button. Square is like not just like the ma- the um, in most games it's the button you'll be pressing the most to attack. So that makes sense that it's square here because you're going to be pressing or shooting the square most, the not most attack, yeah. fucking yeah. Um, but yeah, all the weapons were pretty fun. Uh, I like switching between them, and there's a satisfying crunch to when you're shooting, like the enemies. Yeah, so the, it felt tactile. The hit counter on it, it feels nice to be like, okay, I'm hitting this, even though they might yeah. just like they don't have any like stun like any like yeah. uh, usual game. Where yeah, like, uh, they just take it, which makes sense because Terminators are mindless right. robots. But yeah, which probably makes it a little bit harder to design. But like, well, it's kind of hard to tell if you're even hitting them. Or doing any damage, but that's where I think a game like Binary Domain, which we have to play, uh, does ro- does shooting robots really, really well. Like you know, you're you're chipping away at like the armor and um, you know revealing like the metal skeleton, and then they're like crawling after you, kind of like the Terminator fight in this game. Is that the one that's got like squad commands with like the mic? Uh, I think it did. Because there's, yeah, but I don't there's think two I of those it. games. There's like two of those shooting games that are very similar, like sci-fi. There's, oh lord, I know I got both on Steam, but there's one that's like, I don't think it's binary domain though. No, it, is it binary? I think it is binary domain. Yeah, because it's got the squad thingy where you like raise a yeah voice with recognition your squad. system. Yeah. yeah. I remember this game now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Hey, look, season yeah. <laughs> season eight of this shit is going to be so crazy when we finally it's play gonna this game. It's going to be stacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's actually, I'm looking at it now. Uh, but anyways, not to get too off track with a different game. but um, <laughs> That's kind of how it, Terminator is because it's so, sh- it's so absent-minded like is so short-sighted like i beat this game surprisingly in one sitting like early in the morning i woke up i went to say made my coffee walked my dog and sat down at 7 30 said okay saturday morning just gonna play this game see it through and i surprisingly beat it before noon and i was like that's that's weird usually for these games it's short yeah and it's a good thing that it's short like i know we've been kind of having our hanky pankies at uh long games and being like eh, i'm old no no yeah. more old long games but <laughs> short games like this are good because this game like we've been saying with short games is that if it was any longer it would overstay its welcome and depreciate the value of the rest of the features it's just long enough that like nothing is too annoying the levels aren't too annoying the co- mechanics aren't too annoying everything is just enough to be like all right yeah that was good 
Yes, it's short enough to uh, hide its repetitive gameplay, I would say. So, like, if it lasted any long, like, it's really, it's really well placed. You, um, really well paced. So that means, like, you're not in a level for too long. I never felt like it was an area for too long. It was just moving along to the new, new area, new weapon, new enemy to fight. It was, um, quick and, uh, yeah, like, this, this type of game that's paced in this way, um, is somewhat rare nowadays so i think that's what we mean when it's like yeah it's nice to have this like six hour game and the only reason it took me took me what nine out nine nine or eight hours because i kept dying at the end there was a mission that took me about three hours more was it the mission no it was the mission where you play as kyle reese i want to say it's the last mission when like you're actually in the factory yeah, you're in the factory and you have to ascend this pipe, right? And then you're fighting these. Uh, I know what you. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, yeah. I know and then you have to go up, and then like, there's like a mind control device that there's like a bar at the end. It's basically like timing down to like when mind control will take o- will take you over. So you have to like shoot these turrets in this like turbine area, and then like this face appears and you keep shooting it. But I didn't know what to do for the longest time, and I kept dying. And the respawn point for it is so far back, which um, was uh, was kind of rare for the game. They didn't have too many like, you know, like unforgiving respawn points. But this one was annoying because it would start you up way at the bottom. You have to fight essentially like two mini boss fights, and then you get to the top, and then you have to do that thing. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So that took me three hours. So it took a little longer. Luckily, it wasn't super. This game didn't frustrate me where I feel like it should have sometimes. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, like, because I was going to I thought it was useful. I thought the Luna mission was the one for you because I was walking around like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, what do I do? Which, when you have to, like, which, actually target him to make him oh, walk yeah. and stuff, <laughs> like that whole escort slash hostage mission, I was like, what the fuck? This is, this is annoying. And then right after that, having the Terminator boss fight, I was like, this right. is. And I will say, that Terminator boss fight is going to go down in one of my like, my top fifty boss fights of all time. <laughs> that is such a great boss fight that like exemplifies how it feels fighting a Terminator because it's just helpless. It's just like, bro, I'm shooting rockets at you. Like, stop, yeah. stop running at me. That Luna mission where you have to aim at uh, the bad guy essentially and just like escort him because it was like a new gameplay mechanic. And it takes what you already know how to do and it just repurposes it. And it just felt like somewhat inventive. And you have to like just lock on to him and walk him through like this hallway. And then like some other people come and you got to fight them. And, right. Exactly. But, yeah. It was cool. I, I really, I really liked that part a lot. And I think that's where like it started to grow on me more. I mean, one, you get to play as Luna. So any game where you get to play a girl already, I'm like, cool. Already top five. <laughs> yeah, already. I'm like, cool. Let's keep cool. going. What else? What else you got? You know, um, and then that little like mechanic was cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it like the gameplay feels satisfying enough, and it's just not um, not one of those games where. Well, actually, we 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 probably should talk about the broken camera controls and the frame drops. Did you experience frame drops, or was it just me? Because I had some real bad ones, like in the factory when I was outside. Nothing. Not that I could put my finger on, but I'll probably see in post editing this and be like, oh, yeah, that was that was a slowdown right there. I want to say probably the only one I can think of was that one boss fight where you had to put the C4 on the block and then blow up the block to kill the little boss. Yeah, I think that's I've probably experienced slowdown right there. But yeah, or like with the planes. Yeah. Slowdowns with the plane. Yeah, I have experienced slowdown. Like when you're on the turret mission right before the final mission. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of missions like that where it was like, damn, this is like really choppy, which I'm not like a. Fr- not I, a, I, I not do a like frame f- fanatic, but you would like a yeah. stable. Yeah, exactly. And um, well, I do believe like 60 frames per second is like an ideal way to play a game. Uh, I'm not like, oh, I can never go back to 30 frames per second ever or anything, you know. Right. But yeah, in this game, when 
luckily like your reflexes don't really um hinder like the gameplay isn't dependent on your reflexes so if it drops a couple frames it's like it's fine because you're already locked on and you're you're already like just shooting so if it slows down it's like well i'm still shooting and i'm still locked on i can't um you know unlock on but anyways uh the camera was like the biggest thing that hurt this game for me um when you're fighting the terminator like you mentioned you know, you're in a tight corridor, cameras like freaking out, flipping everywhere. I, I, like you're aiming and the and the Terminator is like off screen. So you're like you're shooting at an, an and he, like, un- unknown at object. You. Yeah. He does like there's like many pounds. there's so much shit that he does off screen and you're like, bro, I can't in the I fixed can't camera, see like we, we keep mentioning it, but there's like an issue to where like because it's not using tank control. So when you're pointing north and it changes the screen. The north is different because of the different screen. So right. when you do it, it's like, okay, what the fuck? And now you're running back, running forward. And imagine that when you're doing super incredible hard boss fights like the Terminator. Yeah. And especially playing Fear Effect, where it does I think I did complain a little bit about the angles and how they change and how it can disorient your direction. Um But that was a more artistical this, situation. Right. Yeah. And then this this game does it worse or does it even yeah like it makes me appreciate fear effect more because of the way this game handled it but also i think it's not even so much the camera angles it's like they lock your direction that you're walking in to place so if you're walking left you know like if you're walking left on one screen um and then the screen or the camera changes angles it'll lock you to keep moving that way and you're like moving your controller thinking that it's the controller that's broken or something right. which happened a lot and if you're in the middle of a fight it gets really frustrating you'll see in some of that where i'm just like bumping into walls because i can't <laughs> fucking like get fucking move. my character yeah to like move where i want them but um i think that was like my biggest gripe just like the the camera the locking um navigation and then just the the frame drops because everything else was like pretty serviceable. It was like the, a short, sweet game, a weekend game. I'm telling you, man. Like this is a this is a game blockbuster. Oh, I love Terminator. Like the movie just came out. I'm going to pick this up. And then you go through your little adventure with it, beat it in a probably a day or maybe two. And then you're good, even though it took me. Well, it didn't take me that long this time, huh? Because we were kind of. You beat it away before I did. Oh, yeah. I beat that in like one day. But, and I was like, what the fuck? This is, I didn't expect that. Yeah. I expected at least a day of frustration and then a second day of just <laughs> enlightenment. But yeah, it was fun. And I I really think jumping off of this, we should play a binary domain um, right at some now. Point. <laughs> or honestly, that that rise of the, the other, the one I sent you the picture of, the Terminator game. Essentially. Trust me, you don't want to play that. Oh, you've tried it? You don't, want, you don't want to play that. I, I have you, it. I have it as well. I have all the time. Oh, you have it? That's why I found that. I found Down of Fate, looked at it at my like local store. The dude's like, yeah, you, if you like Devil May Cry, you'll like that. And I was like, hmm, Terminator Devil May Cry. Okay. And I copped the rest of them. I was like, fuck it. I'll just get the other two Terminator games on PlayStation 2. They are not good. So this is IGN back in 2002. The camera blows. The action isn't exciting, and the game put me to sleep faster than NyQuil. Jesus. IGN was, they were harsh on games, huh? It feels IGN, like they were a little... IGN used to be, yeah, they gave God Hand a 3 out of 10. <sighs> and, yeah, and how they treat Elden Ring and Dark Souls now, it's kind of like. Yeah, it's like they're either like really harsh or like overly pra- praising um, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the camera does blow. Action, I mean, it isn't ex- it isn't exciting like, because it's just robots. But I mean, it's I thought it was like, fun. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was really that was nice. There's something about it that was satisfying in the way like Space Invaders is satisfying. Yeah, like like that's you know what I mean. Like it's yeah. just simple or like maybe one of those like um uh those R type games. You know, like the shooters where you just and you're like the little plane and you're just like shooting. Yeah. It's like you yeah. get w- the experience you get out of it where it's just like, yeah, it could just be one of those 
I'm just exactly, trying to yeah. shoot them up. Or it can be, there's a one shoot them up. Shoot them up is what I'm thinking. It's a it, shoot them up. Yeah. It could be like Ikaruga or something like that, where it's like it's yes. way more. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I th- This is Game Spy. I think if they had a little... M- I think if they had a little more time to work on the camera and control issues and improve the graphics, Dawn of Fate could have been a great game. Instead, it's just a game that the publisher rushed out the door and it's mediocre at best because of it. Um, that's that, I feel like yeah. that's pretty accurate. But mediocre at... Uh, yeah, I guess it's mediocre. It is a back-of-the-rack title. Like, okay, would you recommend this to somebody? Like... If they're like, yeah, I, I like, yeah, character action game, shoot 'em ups, you know, maybe a Contra. I would, I would recommend Genji or Shinobi or anything after, instead of this. Uh, I would say, like, if somebody found this in a thrift store and said, yeah, oh, what the fuck is this Terminator game? I'd be like, dude, that's a fun ass Terminator game. You should play that. Or if somebody was buying a lot and they were looking at all the games they got out of a eBay lot and was like, the fuck is this Terminator game? I'd be like, bro, it's a good ass Terminator game, bro. But I'm not going to tell uh, somebody, okay. yeah, go emulate that game. Like yeah. to seek it out. Yeah. Essentially. Like I'm not telling like, you to go out and buy this game and inflate the price. Like, no, like if you miss this game, it's cool. It's yeah. perfectly okay. This is, this is a good game if it's in a bundle. I wouldn't say to go out of your way to pick it up, but if you're maybe a Terminator fan and if you happen to like shoot 'em ups or Contra. Right, then, yeah. Uh let's see. Unfortunately, the training sequence in the very beginning wastes no inter- wastes no time introducing you to the biggest problem with the do- with Dawn of Fate, which is the controls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it didn't even true. teach you the main fucking uh, one of the main controls, adrenaline. It's like yeah, it's very important mechanic you should explain to people, but they don't. Yeah, you have to look into the manual to to figure out what adrenaline does. Because I was like, "What the fuck is this doing? Am I going faster? Barely? And then am I doing more damage? Uh, I could not tell." Yeah, you know? that's the same. It thing seems like you do. when you're when you're in adrenaline mode, it looks like it aims for their head as opposed to like the center of the yeah. body, but it. I feel like adrenaline mode needed an extra umph to it. Like I feel like it needed maybe you, you like your character is has like a blue trail around them or like an energy field or maybe the screen is a different color or maybe something to make it a little bit more possessed to it. Yeah, like it just felt like now it, are things in slow motion? I don't know. It was kind of weird to me. A little undercooked, I would say. But yeah, that's it for the review roundup. Um do you have any closing thoughts for this game? Hey, man. This is a good-ass game. We're on a streak right now. We're on a streak this season of just good-ass games, bro. There's no complaints now at this point. We're just playing games. At this point in the season, we have Choro Q. Look, we both forgot the first game. Look at this. No, state of emergency. <laughs> Choro Q. I'll take that back. Hold on. I'll take that back. Is that that right? Yeah. We're on a streak starting with Choro Q. (laughs) Choro Q. What do we play after Choro Q? Warriors, Orochi. Fear Effect. Fear Effect. Like, see, like, you're going out of order now, bro. You're spoiling (laughs) next month. (laughs) Jesus Christ. I'll have to bleep that out. Um, (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, it's a pretty good month. This is not going to win any awards for me for the back of the rack. I don't think it's going to be. Not even best soundtrack. The soundtrack. Best graphics. <laughs> Best graphics. Best story. Uh, Something. It, it won't. It'll be the worst of the rack. Damn. The, the you said award. Banned from the rack. I mean, st- I mean okay. comparatively, though. Comparatively, though. I feel you on that. Like, seeing, like. what? Yeah, because what else? Unless. Because, I mean, it's still a state of the emergency for me. But that's only because uh, there isn't much to state of emergency. Like how we felt about you this might game. be right. Yeah, how we felt about this game where it's like, okay, it's cool, sweet, done. But like state of emergency, I had I'm we had to do too much. You're right. I think I yeah, state of emergency is probably still gonna be my worst of the rack. Or what do we call that segment? Is was it worse than the Banned rack? Banned from the rack? I don't know. Banned from the rack, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know our own okay. shit. Oh my god. I right, we're one of our fans is gonna be like, I can't believe them. Are you 
<laughs> you seriously the only fan? Tim is gonna be like, uh, bro. I follow you guys for a reason. You guys are incredible. What the fuck? Remember your own shit. <laughs> yeah, quality is so good. Except uh, they can't remember shit. I do feel like we have some like a pretty stellar quality, though. I would say. I thought you were about to say pretty stellar podcast. memory loss. I was gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> it's all the fucking games, dude. Yeah, all man. the games. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't particularly recommend this. Uh, there's probably caveats uh, to who I would remo- who I would recommend it to, and I did have a fun time with it. I don't. I didn't mind. Like I don't. Like I'm not gonna trade this game in. I'll probably keep it. I think I'll remember it more fondly. And um, yeah, I think it's back of the rack, baby. <laughs> that's when you that's when I like go back of the back of the back of the, and then I like my head explodes <laughs> and like a, a robot pops out and goes like That sounds hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> there's probably like a uh, I wonder if there's like a filter, like a Terminator filter like on He's, Instagram or something. You just throw just it fucking, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Um, he was a T two this whole time. That's so. Yeah. To be terminated. <laughs> All right. I guess we're done. Yeah. We go. So like, make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe. Sandy, do you want to add anything before we? Yeah. Um. Always. I appreciate all of you listeners out there. I know a lot of you guys. So we'll want to watch us but don't all the way watch us or you like watch start watching us but then you get distracted and don't come back or something like that um just analytically wise uh we always say watch us but it is perfectly okay to watch us for 10 minutes and go you know what i want to cook some eggs i want to go play a game i want to do something else so i'm gonna go ahead and listen to us on spotify or listen to us on wherever you listen podcasts at and just take us on the road you go for a jog take us with you you don't just clean in the house take us with you just we are accessible is what i'm trying to say so just put some head headphones on some recons in or whatever the kids is bopping <laughs> these days <laughs> please sponsor and yeah man enjoy the podcast that's all i gotta say to everybody and i just hope you guys have a wonderful day <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of I was like, what time of day should I say? <laughs> Have um, a wonderful midnight, guys. Yeah, and I guess I'll just add real quick here. Yeah, share us with your friends. Maybe if you know uh, a friend who doesn't who plays like obscure random games or likes to just play whatever, you know. Um, yeah, share us around. Get us get help but you might not like this or want to listen to it, but if you want to support us. You can help by getting us out there, you know, sharing, retweeting, maybe sending this to a friend. Hey, you might like this podcast. Two niggas talking about two random ass games that um, you might want to add to your collection or things like that. So, yeah, we appreciate that. But um, that's that's a wrap. So thank you guys and have a wonderful in the words of Sandy. See, exactly, day. bro. It's hard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, night? Uh, day? Yeah, I'm like, uh, all right, well, we're good. We're good. We can just end it there. <laughs>